Tom Owen is the son of the actor Bill Owen and was brought up in Brighton in the 1950s, surrounded by actors. His first big break was as a teenager when he landed the lead in the television series Free Wheelers. When Bill Owen died in 1999, Tom took over his role in Last of the Summer Wine. I spoke to Tom Owen in the noisy cafe at the Everyman Theatre in Cheltenham where he was appearing in his own production of Crap's Last Tape. I asked him what were his earliest memories. Going to see my father in the Thruppany Opera at the Royal Court, um, directed by, um, oh gosh, the, the Amer uh, American actor and director... Sam Wanamaker. Sam Wanamaker, thank you. Um, oh gosh, that would be circa 1953, I guess, something like that, maybe 54, 55. Um, and Sam Wanamaker wanted Peter Lorre to come over from the States and play uh, McKeith, Mac the Knife. And for whatever reason, Peter Lorre couldn't or didn't want to do it. And um, I don't know how it came about, but Bill Owen landed up playing the part and um, he was absolutely magnificent in it. And that was the real kick-off of my father's theatrical career, his performances. Um, so you were, McKeith. what, six, seven? Million? I was probably about that, yeah. But that's certainly the most vivid Memory, first memory I have um, of live theatre, yeah. I mean, did you, were you aware that your father was an actor? Did you meet lots of people he worked with? I mean, yeah, Well, kind of. I, I kind of was brought up in the, the sort of Brighton bubble. In those days, Brighton was the hub of the show business yeah, yeah. world. And anybody, everybody in show business lived in Brighton. You travelled to the West End on the Brighton, on the Brighton Bell. Yeah, yeah. And you came back after the show with the likes of Larry Olivia and Joan Plowright, Alan Melville. I mean, the list is just endless. And I was brought up in this kind of bubble. And I can remember my father travelling up to town, maybe to do um, um, uh, the Thrupney Opera. I don't know. But um, it was a kind of weird existence for me as a child. Um, and I was aware that my father wasn't a kind of nine-to-fiver. He didn't do what all my mates in Sussex Square used to do. He was quite well known at that time, wasn't he? Was yeah, he was. Films, he? yeah, he was. I mean, he, he'd, um, he'd started off with, with Johnny Mills and all that kind of stuff in films like Way to the Stars and Trotty True and, uh, with, uh, you know. Um, and he progressed through the years to the early 50s um, to doing really good theatre. Um, and was being recognised as, um, apart from a kind of propaganda war actor, if you like, um, along with so many others, Victor Madden, Sam Kidd, all of those um, uh, actors, good, solid actors, that appeared in all the um, uh, war films, post and, and, uh, and after. It really was like a uh, repertory company. It, it was a to it was a, well, it was the rank stable. Mm. It was the rank stable, and they just farmed them out, and they would be in every film that was going, playing the corporal or the it sergeant all, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or the seaman or whatever it was. Uh, and Bill kind of, um, kind of got out of that mode through his own fault. Well, fault through his own decision. He didn't. He had the opportunity of going into the Carry On films, and I can't remember exactly the year that the first one, Carry On Sergeant, was. It was something like fifty four, fifty five maybe a bit later, uh, but he chose not to go down that route and um, he made it quite clear that he didn't approve of all this rank business and um, probably didn't work as much as he maybe should have done, but he then established himself as, um, as a really fine stage actor. I mean, did he have aspirations to do I don't know, Stratford or National? Or Never. He did, in, in, in his later years, he, he did join the National Theatre. He, uh, as I do, have a certain scepticism about organisations such as yeah. the RSC, and I've been a member of the RSC, um, and the National Theatre, purely because of budgetary issues, uh, national budgetary issues, which I think is very unfair that they get the cream of the crop. And little theatres like we're sitting now at the Cheltenham Everman struggle to keep mm. their doors open. It's not right. Um, of course, there should be a Royal Shakespeare Company, of course, there should be a national theatre, but I think the allocation of funds is highly unfair. But Absolutely, I mean, they, to a certain extent, can look after themselves. Yeah. I did digress from, from your, your main question. 
Michael. Um, I can't. It, yes, it was normal, only because I'd never experienced anything else. Mm. But I soon found that when I was playing in the square with my mates that had 95 fathers that, that had their regular two or three holidays a year or whatever it was, I very soon realised that this wasn't normal. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> and and the, the, the cocktail parties with dear Dora Bryan and, and Larry Olivier and Joan Plowright and, um, and the thousands of others down in Brighton was not normal for a child of... Uh, six or seven or, or informative years. Were you included or sent up to bed? Or uh, I, 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 yeah, I was. I was shown off. Yeah, this is Tommy, you know. And then it was time for young Tommy to go to bed and get out of the way. Um, not in a nasty way, but that, that was the way that it was. And Bill hated. He didn't like the whole Brighton scene at all, um, and he went along with it um, because he was at the time he was married to my mother, and my mother loved. You know, um, all that kind of bright bubble yeah. stuff. You know, and, you know the people that I met when I was young, it, it was phenomenal, really. People like Judy Garland and, that I was introduced to. Uh, used to be a, a very well-known lawyer, theatrical lawyer, who lived in Brighton, called David Jacobs. Mm. And he represented everybody that was anybody. I mean, the biggest stars in the world. And I can remember being dragged along there. And as I say, meeting the likes of, 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 of Judy um, and a myriad of others. And that was the life I lived, which was quite bizarre. Was it sort of taken for granted, either by you or your parents, that you would go on the stage? Or what was the situation with that? Um, I, I don't think it was taken for we granted. We pushed on the stage when you were... No. Carried on when you're three months older. Like no. They, I think my father and my mother realised that this, you know, wasn't a good profession, and it isn't. I wouldn't. I didn't advise my son to go into it, and nobody would really, because uh, it's nonsense. It's stupid. Um, having said that, I wouldn't have done anything else. Um, but I was very lazy at school, and I guess it would appear to be. Um, an easy cop-out. Was there any question of you doing anything else? Not really, because I wasn't clever enough. You know, um, I, I, I was, was sent to public school, which I hated, um, and I achieved three O-levels, and I can remember my father saying, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be an actor. And he said, well, OK, but you've got to get another two O-levels. We'll take you away from Lansing, but you've got to cram for two extra O-levels, which I did, so I got five in the end. And um, he said, all right, now you've done that, you want to be an actor, I warn you against it, but I'll give you all the backing I can, which he did. Was it useful? Um, yeah, uh, because I quickly realised as I went into the business what a talent he had as an actor. And to this day, I see um, a lot of the work that he's done from which I can learn, from which any actor can learn, not just because he's my father. And um, so he's been, even now he's gone, is a huge inspiration for me to better myself as a performer. Mm. So how did you actually get started? How did I? Mm -hmm. um, Bill only ever got me one job in his life. You didn't go to drama school? No. Yeah. No, I auditioned, I think, for RADA, maybe Lambda, I don't know, but failed. Um, and Bill at the time was writing a musical called The Match Girls. And uh, that was to be premiered at Leatherhead Theatre in 1965. Um, Who's, and it was running Leatherhead then? Le Hazel Vincent Wallace. That's right. And um, he said to Hazel, he said, look, I've got this young boy of mine who wants to be an actor. I want him to learn the business from the bottom up. Uh, greatest thing he ever did. And Hazel offered me a job as a student ASM for a pound a week in 19, for the 1966-67 season at Leatherhead. And that's where I learnt my craft. In, in that one year, um, mm. really it was about three years, truncated into one, because sure. you worked, because Dad sent me a banker's draft for seven quid a week, so I had eight pounds, and my digs were three pounds, ten shillings, and anyway. But I learnt everything there, which it, it built in me a great respect for stage management. Sure. And it taught me stuff. Now, even now, um, after so many, so many years later, I, 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 I'm utilising 
in some way, shape or form, the skills mm. that I learnt from that year um, sure, yeah. at Leatherhead. Mm. So you were at Leatherhead for what? For the, was a 40 weeks? It was a year. It was, it was, I was there, there for a year. Um, I went to, um, oddly enough, Bill Kenroy was appearing in pantomime at Leatherhead at the time and he and I struck up a friendship and my contract was over in March 68 I think 60, 67 March 67 and um, we landed up Bill and I sharing a flat together and he had just come out of Coronation Street and he was recording pop songs not very well as I've told them but um, he was, he was going to be a pop star and he also went into a musical called Annie not the Annie that we know, but another musical called Annie at the Moral Rearmament Theatre, which was Westminster. <laughs> so I went, Bill got me a job there as an ASM. So I went there as an assistant stage manager, and the stage manager was a guy called Barry Busbridge, who was also a writer, and he'd written a new groundbreaking at the time children's television series called Free Wheelers. Mm. And um, that was to be produced by Southern Television. Southern Television's offices were just around the corner from the Westminster Theatre in Stag Place. And Barry said, look, I'll have a word with the producer and director, Chris McMaster, and get you an interview and see what happens. Maybe you can get a couple of episodes or an episode. So I trotted along the first interview that I'd ever had in my life, really. And um, I was cast as the lead in this new television series. And at the time, children's television was set as in the studio with... Um, was, this, know, was this drama? Yeah. I don't remember yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was all, all Muffin the Moon and Andy Pan. And how old were you then? Um, 18, something like that. 18, 19. And this was all, you know, it was going to be on film. The kids were taking the lead, not being patronised by adults. It was, you know, really was groundbreaking stuff. And um, anyway, I was cast as the lead, and I went on to make 52 episodes of that. And then everything kind of snowballed from, from there. So I was incredibly lucky, really. Incredibly lucky. Green as the, green as the grass, but um, that's how it panned out. And... Subconsciously, I was thinking, I've got to get back to the theatre. Even at that age, I had to get back to the theatre. And one of the actors in Free Wheelers was an, uh, a guy called Ronald Govey. And he ran Weekly Rep in Sidmouth, the Manor Park Pavilion. And I said, I didn't know what Weekly Rep was. You know, I didn't have a clue what it was like. And I said, look, Ron, you know, I'd love to come down when we've got a break in between filming. And I was getting all the publicity and all from freewheelers, and Ron said, "Well, yeah, that'd be great. Advertise you, television, blah blah blah." So I went down there. And my God, you know, I did um, two seasons, three seasons of Weekly Rep, and in the same way that I learned so much as as a student ASN. My God, well, you know better than anybody. <laughs>